So let's have a lesson on this piece by Soar. This comes from his Opus 31. This is number one. And um, if you have this piece in another book, just follow the lesson for free and pick up some tips um, about phrasing and, music and approaching new pieces. But if you need the music, this is part of my Volume 2 Easy Classical Guitar Collection. And there's a link for that underneath the video. So this is a fairly straightforward piece musically. Um, you have to bring out the melody. Um, it's a very classical era piece, so very symmetrical, eight bar phrases um, throughout the whole piece. So um, very straightforward in that regard. But there's some tricky right hand fingering that you might want to observe. I mean, for the most part, you just want to alternate your, your right hand fingers for the melody, use your thumb for the bass. So in that way, it's very simple. But I've made some suggestions, some definite suggestions in this particular case. So first thing you want to do is just play that melody on its own, uh, making sure that you uh, have really nice legato phrasing so it's very smooth and connected and that you're easing into the phrase and easing out of it at the end of the phrase. So the melody is just the stems going up. Um, in bar 12 there, you could include those other notes, but they almost sound accompanimental. So, you know, you try to bring out something very simple when you bring out the melody. Now in the second half, the melody continues. So once you feel like you kind of really know that melody, you've played it a few times, um, then you can add the other notes in, but try to keep that melody um, up at a high quality level. So the same quality as when you played it on its own. But let's just do a walkthrough of the piece and I'll just talk as I go and I'll discuss a couple of the, the fingerings as well. So a lot of the time in this piece, there's some pretty big jumps. So I'll use like um, P and I followed by an A finger. And then I just try to alternate afterwards. Sometimes um, throwing in too many A's can be too confusing, like you have to pay attention too much. So in this piece, when it's an arpeggio, like in bar two here, I will do I am A, but then you'll notice afterwards, I just do I am alternation after that. And then I throw an A and put the accompaniment. So for the most part, if it makes sense to do an arpeggio, I'll do P-I-M-A. But then afterwards, to make sure it's not too complicated, I'll just continue with I am alternation after that. Um, so that's kind of how I'm approaching it. So let's go on from bar nine. Same phrase, basically. Here, because I want to end up with a certain fingering, I use M, this is in bar um, 11. M, I, A, that way P and I play here. M, I, M. Because I want to end up on bar 13 with P and M on those notes. So sometimes when you're fingering your music in the right hand, you, you have to choose where you want to arrive because that bar 13 is really good with P, M, followed by I, followed by P, A. So you, you know that something is good for one bar and then you backtrack through the piece putting in your fingering until you find out how you can get into that good fingering. So from bar 11, I'm going P, M, I, A, P, I, M, I. That way I end up on P, M here. Now, that's a lot of like information and of course it's listed on the sheet music so you can just follow the sheet music. But um, the, the thing you want to do is just to make sure if there's any places in the piece that require a specific fingering, you mark those in and then you just backtrack a little bit and put some preparation fingering in because if you want to start with PM somewhere, you can't use M on the note before that. So you might, you write, you write your PM on because that's your destination and then you write the I finger just before to make sure that you don't use the wrong finger just before something important. And that's how I would generally approach fingering. You generally alternate, so you make sure you're not repeating fingers. And then um, you mark the specific spots and backtrack as needed to make sure that you can approach them properly. 
Um, just finishing that bar 13 off. I decided at the end there to go um, PA or PM or something. Another thumb and then IA. That's the one place where the bass voice gets an I finger. And then I actually repeat IA again in the next bar. Um, I think that kind of simplifies it there. You could use the thumb the whole time. And you could even then alternate a little bit. But it's, a, it's just a little bit fast for so many um, thumbs in a row. Um, second half of the piece, start with I. Here, um, it's not ideal to do the fingering that I do throughout this whole next four bars, but because it can be consistent, I do it anyway. So I'm essentially going P, A, followed by I, M, and then, P, and then the same thing again and again and again. P, A, I, M, P, A, I, M, P, A, I, M. Even though it's not ideal to use those fingers on those strings, um, because it's consistent for every single bar, um, it's easier to remember and therefore sometimes just easier to play. So bar 17, pick up. A, M, A, I, M, A, I, M, A, I, M. And then just whatever alternating fingers through there. All these uh, repeated Gs, just keep them very soft and suppressed. They're not melody. And then the ending is the same as another part of the piece. So overall a pretty easy piece, but there might be a couple parts where you definitely want to just like know what fingering you're going to use. Um, I've written in quite a bit of right hand fingering, so please uh, by all means follow mine, especially if you're more on the beginner side. But if you come up with your own, just make sure you're alternating fingers. Besides that, just make sure you're phrasing it really beautifully and you're very smooth and legato the whole time. It's kind of part of what soar is all about.